Okay, now let's remember that when we go over this, we want to make sure that everybody is on point with the fact that Dr. Brown said there, there is no such thing as any kind of global plot, no UN Habatist death cult of a certain sect of Jews who have gained authority and control within the U.S. government, the U.N. and abroad. It's all fantasy. It's all imagination. There's nothing to it. Remember that he set you up to believe that. He's going to get into the body histrionics, right? He's the authority with all the books behind him. He's the doctor. He knows what he's talking about. He grew up in Israel. He knows better than you do. You need to listen to him. As the rabbis derive from rabbinic exegesis, rabbinic interpretation from those chapters, they're not clearly found there. But there is a myth circulating today. It is a myth, and I want to shout it from the rooftops that it's a myth that religious Jews are working with various world governments to impose the Noahide laws, at which point they will say, Christians are idolaters, Christians are idol worshipers because they believe in a trinity and believe Jesus is God, and based on the Noahide laws, they should be put to death so that religious Jews working with world governments will have Christians put to death under the Noahide laws. Forget that, it's nonsense. Christians are being put to death every day for their faith. And yes, religious Jews oppose the gospel of Jesus, especially wait a minute religious Jews oppose the gospel of Jesus Christ really they do but we don't need to worry about Noahide because people are being killed for their faith every day so we don't need to worry about it so like when the Bible says in Revelation 20 that there will be people who are beheaded for their faith we just totally don't even know, listen, need to listen to scripture I mean why would scripture from Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit be warning us of any kind of danger coming for those who were not truly born again, but rather they were left behind and then they become that sect, that, that group of elect rather, uh, that is future Smyrna. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Dr. Brown. Hold on. Wait up. Revelation 20 verse says, four says, I saw thrones and they that sat upon them. Oh, look at that. The victim becomes the judge under King Jesus. Keep that in mind. And judgment was given, what? To them? Judgment was given to them? Hmm, this is going to get good. And I saw the souls of those that were, what? Not handed ice cream and cookies? They were beheaded? For their witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his mark nor had received his, uh, or his image rather, and had not received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Hold on, does does Doctor Brown know that the Bible is telling us that the Noahide laws are totally coming to kill people? Is he aware of that? Because we've done videos going over that so that people can know exactly where to go. And it's detailed here in this video. Dr. Brown doubles down and lies about the Noahide laws and denies the UN Habad global plot to murder Christians. Now, if that's all just a bunch of silly, silly, nothing you actually need to worry about, then can he possibly explain what this is about, 99.99999% of the world is garbage idol worshipers. Hmm, that sounds some sounds like some uh, theocracy going on there with a global, global rule that's coming and some supremacy, some supremacists that think that they are somehow elevated above everybody else based on the worship of the name. Let's listen. Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling you, you have to make a choice. Either you're 100% with Kadosh Baruch Hu, or you're with the rest of the garbage of the world. Right now we have almost 8 billion people in the world. 99.999% of them are Reshaim Gmurim. Christians, almost 2.5 billion of them, all idolaters. 
What do you think? Kadosh Baruch thinks there's tzaddikim? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Apparently, this gentleman has not been thoroughly versed and taught by Jews for Jesus, Dr. Michael Brown. Michael Brown says that there's no Noahide coming to hold anybody accountable for what they deem as idolatry. So, you know, he clearly needs to get on the same page as Dr. Brown, who is the bastion of all wisdom and knowledge, tricking people before they get cut off and then get their heads cut off because they repent and realize, oh no, the Bible was real. Jesus was real. The Christians were real. They tried to warn me. I went to this one lady's channel and she tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. I don't want that to happen to you, but it's going to happen to somebody. And I'm just a little channel. Where's the rest of the bigger channels worrying and warning people about this? There's a few, but my word, I've got more fingers on my hands than there are big ministries warning people. Anyhow. Almost two and a half billion of them, all idolaters. What do you think? Kadosh Bukhus thinks it's tzaddikim? Arabs, the vast majority of them want to kill us. What do you think? The tzaddikim? Billion and a half. Already you're at four billion. All the Asians in China, almost two billion and growing, even with the one child policy. Almost all of them are either atheist or idolaters. It's another two billion, you're at six. India, 80,000 different cults and religions. 80,000 different cults and religions. Jewish community, barely 4,000 people. Most of them Chilonim Gemurim. Billion people, another garbage. They have people in India that eat people, still. Cannibalists. You think Kadosh Baruch says these Tzadikim? Rashaim Gemurim. Rabotai, even the majority of our own brothers and sisters, unfortunately, according to the Torah, Rashaim. We love them, we want them to go do tshuva, but if they die today, Hashem Yachem, nothing can help them. That's why we'll finish with this. You guys can ask all the questions you want. The Gemara Masechet Sanhedrin says that En Ben David Ba, Ela, Ledor Shukulo Zakai, Okulo Chayav. Ben David, the Mashiach Ben David, is not going to come until the generation is all righteous or all wicked. Chachamim say it's never going to be possible. If they're all righteous, it's never going to be. There's always going to be one rasha. There's always going to be one atheist, one wicked, one homosexual. There's always going to be one of those. How can it be? Mashiach's never going to come. And all rashaim, that's also not possible. Why? For the world to exist, it has to be at least 36 tzaddikim. It has to be at least 36 tzaddikim. So it can never be all. So the Gemara explains, no, no. It's not that everyone has to be tzaddikim or everyone has to be rashaim. What is the Gemara really saying? What is HaKadosh Baruch Hu really saying here? The Mashiach is not coming until everybody makes a choice. Either you're 100% going with Hashem, you're Tzaddik. You're going to do your best to be the best. Doesn't mean you're perfect. You make mistakes, but you're going to do your best. Or you're going to do your best to go against Hashem. You're just going to simply ignore Everything the Torah says. Care less. Make your own rules. No one in the middle. Throughout all of history, we've always had people in the middle. He goes to Beknesset, but then he goes to the movies. He goes to the Kolel, but then he has a girlfriend, though. He has a business, he gives staka, but it's an illegal business. Middle ground, we've always had. Kadosh Baruch Hu says Mashiach is only going to come when everybody makes a choice. <laughs> so why? When, what if nobody wants to make a choice? Shem says, no, no, no. I'm going to make them make a choice. And that's what's happening right now, Rabotai. That's what's happening right now. Everybody is being put on the spot. Everyone is being put pressure on. That, that's what's happening right now. Everybody is being put on the spot. Everyone is being put pressure on. You have to make a choice. I do wish he would show the source of where that came from, but did you <laughs> Did you see the students? Why? When, what if nobody wants The students are being tortured. She's like taking it in and that person and that person. 
that guy's like totally texting or whatever. He's like into his phone. He doesn't care. Just shush. This guy just looks terrified. You know, he's just taking it in. This guy's like, oh, I'm so scared. And this guy's just sitting there and this guy's taking it in. What university or yeshiva or wherever, where is this taking place that this man is able to teach this horrible racist bull? I have no idea because Adam didn't source his material or link us, which would have been helpful. But nonetheless, so you can see that there's a game being played. Yeah. So what did he mean? There's coming a, a, a point where everybody is going to be forced to choose. Was he talking about the world government involving the AI super intelligence monster they crafted in 28, uh, 2018 last year at the world economic, no, the world government summit, rather world government summit in uh, the Middle East? Was it that? Was it the Zionist surveillance web where Israel and China have their fingers into everything and so do the Masons and so does America? Is it that? Uh, the AI on Earth where it goes from the 2D to in the body's 3D, you know, like the robots. Is that what he meant? Could that be? Especially while you have the uh, economy just absolutely tanking globally. You, you think that we're being manipulated maybe? Brian, there was quite a Jerusalem prayer breakfast there at The Hague and you did a film specifically for that, uh, for that event. Tell us about the film. It was screened last June. Um, it's called The Hager Jerusalem. And basically the intent was to raise an awareness uh, in the church about how detrimental the Hague can be against Israel. And what a lot of people don't know about the Hague is it's the international city of peace and justice, and it's also the second highest seat in the United Nations. Now, every day you turn on the news, you hear all the anti-Semitism, anti-Israel hatred in the United Nations, but what the Hague and the two courts that, that are in the Hague can be very detrimental to Israel more than its big brother headquarters in New York City. So what were you trying to communicate through the film? Just as the title says, the Hague or Jerusalem, there's a choice that needs to be made. And it's time for the nation to decide where they think the legal capital of the world will be. Former Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, and King Willem of the Netherlands, and other leaders have been quoted saying that the Hague is the legal capital of the world. Well, as for believers, our Bibles tells us in Isaiah 2, 3, that the law shall go forth out of Zion. So when you hear rumors and other counterfeits of what the Bible says, I think us <sighs> believers that love Israel, that are called to be watchmen on the wall, should be praying and standing with our brothers and sisters in Israel. You know, Brian, you were there at the Jerusalem prayer breakfast there in The Hague. Tell me uh, your impressions of what it was like to be there itself. Well, you know, it was truly an honor, Chris, uh, to be there and... Uh, Michelle Bachman, former congresswoman from Minnesota, was the keynote speaker. We've had other parliament members there, uh, ambassadors from several nations, and even Knesset members in Israel there in attendance. And just to be able to screen our film and basically share what my colleague and friend Jack Vandertang, who is the executive producer, what he's seeing in his own backyard in The Hague, I believe it raised a lot of eyebrows and, and opened a lot of eyes to what's really happening and what we can be praying for and standing for Israel even more in these times that we're living in. Going forward, what do you see for the Jerusalem prayer breakfast? Well, um, it's, it's definitely expanding. Uh, obviously, it originated in the city of the Great King in Jerusalem. Uh, they had their first conference outside of Jerusalem last fall in November in Orlando. Uh, obviously, they had one in The Hague, and there's going to be some in uh, London, in Europe. Uh, other countries are stepping up to support and stand with Israel. So I think in this hour uh, where Israel needs more friends than ever, the body of Christ and even our Jewish brothers and sisters are standing together as one and, and praying for the peace to Jerusalem and um, just that the Lord would be glorified. Well, Brian, we appreciate the work that you do and we look forward to the next time you're here in Jerusalem. Thanks again for having me and always a blessing to come back to uh, the city of, uh, of God. Wow. So much propaganda. 
The Hague is the legal capital of the world. Since the end of World War II, this location has been known as the world court and source of international law. That's why hundreds of Jews and Christians met here to meet, speak and pray. Jerusalem is the capital, will be the capital of the law, international law, and that will be God's law, the Torah. Like Isaiah 2 said, that the law will go out from Zion. So you can see that there is a battle between God and human. And I believe that what we have done here and we have proclaimed that there is a change now.